Welcome back. This video is about the lower digestive tract, including the accessory organs, the small intestine, and the large intestine. So let's go. Here are all of the organs in the lower digestive tract. This is everything below the stomach. So as you can see, we've got a lot to cover, so we should get started. So heading out of the stomach, we make our way into the duodenum. So this, uh, after about two hours, the thick liquid digested food called chyme is released into the first part of the small intestine, which is called the duodenum. This part of the small intestine is about 10 to 15 inches long, and it's where the chyme is mixed with digestive enzymes created by the accessory organs. And this is where chemical digestion finishes. Chemical digestion finishes in the duodenum. So what are accessory organs? Your digestive tract has many accessory organs, which are organs that help your digestive tract turn the food you eat into usable components. So in our last video, we learned about the salivary glands, which produce saliva, the teeth, and the tongue. Those are all accessory organs. The other accessory organs of the digestive system are the liver, the gallbladder, and the pancreas. So let's start with the liver and the gallbladder. Your liver is your largest internal organ. The liver is responsible for up to 500 separate functions, usually working with other systems and organs. Its main function is to filter out toxins and waste from the blood. Your liver can also store energy for later, produce hormones, and recycle worn out red blood cells. Your liver also produces a chemical called bile. Bile is a digestive enzyme that breaks apart large fat molecules into smaller usable components. Bile is stored in your gallbladder until it's needed. The gallbladder squirts bile into the duodenum to help your body digest the fat in the food that you eat. Okay, on to the pancreas. Your pancreas is another accessory organ and it's located right behind your stomach, as you can see in the GIF there. And your pancreas is actually part of two body systems, the digestive system and the endocrine system. As a part of the endocrine system, it's best known for regulating how much sugar is in your bloodstream by producing the hormones insulin and glucagon. Uh, as a part of the digestive system, your pancreas produces digestive enzymes that break down carbohydrates, fats, and proteins in the duodenum into usable components. Okay, on to the rest of the small intestine. So we have the duodenum at the very beginning, and then you actually have two more parts of your small intestine. You have the um, jejunum and you have the ileum. So the small intestine has two jobs, to finish digestion and absorb nutrients. The reason the small intestine is so long is to provide plenty of opportunities for the body to absorb nutrients from the digested food. Now your small intestine is lined with villi. This is what it looks like. They're tiny finger-like structures that increase the small intestine's surface area. If you were to iron out your whole small intestine until it were totally flat, it would cover two whole parking spots. Um, all of this extra surface area on those villi helps you absorb even more nutrients from your food. It's kind of like drying off with a smooth towel versus drying off with like a fluffy towel. That fluffy towel can hold a lot more water because of the fluffy things sticking out of it, just like the villi in your small intestine. All right, on to the large intestine. The main function of the large intestine is to absorb water and any remaining nutrients. The large intestine also contains helpful bacteria that produce the vitamin K and a variety of B vitamins. The last part of the large intestine stores and compacts feces or poop, which is made of the indigestible parts of food like fiber and then body waste. So believe it or not, the bulk of your feces is actually made of recycled red blood cells. That's what makes your poop brown. Okay, the appendix, very famous part of the digestive tract. The appendix is located at the very beginning of the large intestine. Scientists are not sure what the appendix does for the body, but current evidence suggests that it might store helpful bacteria that the body can use in case of illness. Basically, if all the helpful bacteria in the large intestine were killed off 
are removed from the body due to an illness like severe diarrhea, the bacterial colony could start to regrow from the bacteria stored in the appendix. Your appendix is kind of like a savings account for bacteria. Okay, finally we are to the rectum and the anus. So the rectum is the final straight portion of the large intestine. It's lined with specialized nerve cells. Your rectum can detect how full it is and whether the contents in it are solid, liquid, or gas. When your rectum becomes full of feces, it sends a signal to your brain that you need to defecate or poop. Feces pass out of the body through a sphincter called the anus. The main job of the anus is to control the passage of feces out of the body. All right, that's everything I know about the lower digestive tract, including the accessory organs, the small intestine, and the large intestine. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time.